meeting to order uh, and welcome those who are here in attendance and those watching uh, at home or wherever on uh, YouTube. Our first item uh, up on the agenda is approval or discussion of the of this meeting's agenda. Chairman, I'll move the agenda to be approved. All right, we have a motion. We have a second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. The agenda is approved. Next up is public comments. And do we have anyone here for any public comments? <coughs> They have anybody outside. Yep. You happen to be here for public comments? <coughs> okay, so uh, well, we will move on. Uh, it, uh, Madam Clerk, any one from today? Okay. Then next up, we'll begin our uh, public hearings. Uh, first up is case 2201, and I'll call Braston Newton, our planning director, up uh, to introduce that. Good evening, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Um, our first case this evening is 22-01. This is a petition to rezone 126.14 acres located on the 1200 block of the New Bethel Road, Cleveland Township from agricultural residential to agricultural residential with interstate highway interchange overlay. Uh, owner, Maz Johnson uh, Jones Trust and Carl Trotter Jr. Applicant of Site Development, Charles Walker. Uh, utilities and services in this area provided by McLemore Fire District Clayton Rescue. Uh, the existing land use for the property is uh, essentially is, is vacated. It's woodland for the most part. Uh, surrounding zoning and land uses is AR, used for residential or agricultural purposes, and IHI SUD, and this would be on the south side of Swift Creek. Uh, this is the River Oaks uh, Landing uh, Development on Sunland Parkway. Um, traffic concerns, New Bethel Road is a dead-end road and there are no counts available. Um, and New Bethel Road does not appear on our comprehensive transportation plan as needing improvement. Uh, the property is designated in primary, whereas being in primary growth area in accordance with, counties, with the county's uh, land use plan. Uh, just give you some history on this property, it was previously before the planning board and the board of commissioners in July or planning board in July of 2020 and commissioners in October of 2020. Uh, it was presented as a 467 unit uh, plan unit development and both planning board and board of county, well, planning board recommended the now board of commissioners upheld that recommendation. I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Any questions, Mr. Newton, at this point? I, I, I do. I'm yes, sorry, sir. Mr. Um, on the IHI, Newton, Mr. Newton, what is the standard parameters of that? So the the IHI is an overlay district which extends 3,000 okay. uh, 3, feet radius from the center of the nearest interchange within the county. And in this situation, this would be the interchange of I-40 and NC-42. Okay. So the the if, if you look on the zoning map, you'll see the circle that is described there, and there's a portion of the uh, River Oaks Landing or River Landing Cliff View development on the south side of the creek that was expanded. That was expanded some some time ago, back in roughly around 2008, 2007, 2008, maybe even 2009. I can't remember if it was pre or post uh, post recession. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> If not, I would like to call the applicant forward. And if you would state your name and address, please. Uh, good evening. A member of the board, uh, Keith Roberts. Address is 202 Bonica Creek Drive in Garner. Thanks for your time tonight uh, for consideration of this uh, rezoning. Uh, as uh, Mr. Newton stated, the property is located near the uh, major intersection here of I-40 and US-70, which seems to be an ideal situation for the IHI zoning. We also uh, appreciate the support we had from the planning board this go around on this product. Um, you know, this site is located basically bordered on the west by I-40, on the north by Highway 70 uh, interchange and by the future of I-40 on the south side by environmental features and on the east by residential subdivision. Uh, 
looking at it, you know, um, now the intent would be to go in there with some type of product, sort of like the tapestry that was done over at 4042. Um, I think the reason I'm here tonight is because I was the engineer and site planner on that project. I think that was the last time I was before that board, which was about seven years ago, and that project turned out to be a really great asset to the county, I believe. The uh, duplex is there to attract more of the older people like myself now. <laughs> yeah. um, I really believe this is, would be the best zoning product for this site. Um, it is in a transition area between single family residential and a major interstate. I think most would agree that single family backing up to the interstate is not an ideal situation. And it seems that this is the reason that the IHI zoning was adopted. Also, this type of product is not a heavy generator of traffic, would have low environmental impact, and due to the nature, the typical buyer would not be an overburden on schools. But most of all, I think you know, based on the location, this site definitely meets the intent of the IHI zoning. Um, again, we appreciate your support, and I'm here for any questions I can answer. We also have a representative from Ramey Kemp who did a uh, TIA for the parcel, if you have any traffic questions. I just want to make, this is just a rezoning hearing though, so. Correct. Okay, just want to make sure. Any questions of uh, Mr. Roberts? Was any of this land lost to DOT on that major intersection improvements they're doing? <coughs> I, I am not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. Looks like it butts right up to it. <coughs> yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. Any Anyone else here to speak on uh, this case? All right, appears not. If not, I will close the public discussion portion of the hearing and ask Mr. Newton to come and summarize uh, and present the planning board's recommendations. Yes, sir, as it relates to case 22-01, the uh, expansion of the IHI to the uh, subject property, planning board does recommend approval and offers for your consideration a resolution uh, for a statement of consistency. Any, any questions, Mr. Newton? It's your opportunity to ask questions and get any clarifications before I close the hearing. I, I'm trying to figure out, uh, Braxton, so when they first came before us, it was all residential, single family, or what, what was it? Yes, it was. Uh, so there was a mix of townhomes and single family detached. And, and has the units reduced any or? Um, I'd, I'd rather allow the applicant to, to address that. I don't want to speak where I'm not really. Okay, I apologize. For what their development plans are for the property since we're strictly legislative. I would just add, I mean, at this point for the rezoning, I mean, is that an expectation that they would know the final? design I, I mean there I'm, I'm sure since they're here and there was a desire to develop for you know some type of residential use previously they would have some idea about their plans going forward yes sir all right mr chairman you call it back up do they have to get a special use permit to do residential in the highway district um so in order to development at a higher density than what is normally allowed they would have to get they would have to get approval from this body so it would be a special use permit so it would with a pud it would require a special use permit which would allow anywhere from four to six units or up to six units per acre in density and they also have the ability to do one and a half units per acre in density but once again that's still a, with sewer and that's still a, a, a special use permit that needs to be provided by the school so without any special permits or conditions what would the density? One unit per acre. Yeah. Properties in the environmentally sensitive overlay. Okay. What use could this property be put other than what they're asking for in the so, situation that it's in? So currently, uh, as it is, essentially agri we're agriculture and residential. So those residential properties, it's residentially zoned. They could develop at one unit per acre uh, for residential. 
um, or any other approved uh, approved development. So a, a place of worship, church is allowed in that. Park systems may be allowed in that if they're government uh, government operated. But that, that's essentially you're looking at agricultural residential type uses only. Well, where it is surrounded by <coughs> two roads and subdivisions. I think the only use of that would be residential. That, that would be probably a highest and best use, yes. <coughs> Can we uh, approve this and with, with the understanding that it'd be one unit per acre or, or in, in this situation, as the application stands, it's a it's a straight rezoning, so it's not a conditional zoning. So we can't place condition on that. If if the IHI overlay is expanded by approval this evening, then they could essentially develop any use that is currently permitted within that IHI overlay, and that's fairly expensive. So that goes into your commercial and some light industry or light industrial uses as well. But if nothing changed, they could still build residential one unit per acre. They could, yes. Right where they're at now. That's at the AR <coughs> zone. Right. At, with yeah. AR zone. Yeah. That's without the IHI. Without yeah. IHI. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. The property, as I recall, the plan were to discuss some, some wetlands in certain areas of it. So yes, if if you look at the if you look at the screen, the lower half, if you'll see the, the bottom uh, of the portion of the property, that is Swift Creek. So there are there are considerable wet areas. I'm not going to say the wetlands. I don't have the, the, the ability to determine right. whether or not they're wetlands. But I would say there's a wet area uh, in there and even going back toward uh, the west at I-40 near the... So roadway. conceivably, they could still get one dwelling per acre even if there was 10 acres of it unusable, could they get 10 acres for the whole track, uh, one per acre for the whole track? Or it, it, according to our ordinance, it won't net out that way. It's going to net out as a 40,000 per 30,000 square foot minimum lot size. Right. Okay. So it's not going to really you net out one unit per acre. Right. It's going to net out or less. My question, of course, is that we take out. You got 126. You say you got 10 acres of unusable wet wet natured soils or whatever that weren't conducive to building, do they still get that 10 acres counted in no. for this? They, they do, according to our ordinance, yes, they do. Oh, so we, okay. we calculate, no. we calculate, in this situation, we calculate the, we calculate your density based on the gross acreage of land. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, your gross yeah. acreage, it's not net. Well, I thought we said minimum 30,000 square feet. 40,000 square feet, lot size. Wait, so it's an environmentally we, we, sensitive area. Yes, it's an environmentally sensitive area. So if you've got a minimum 40,000 square foot lot size, you're only going to well, get refresh one. Well, refresh my memory. Last year, we changed it maybe year before, where we didn't average. It had a minimum square footage. That, that's correct. So our so if it's 40,000, you essentially can say gross, they could, they could gross calculation. It would be 126 acres times that one would be 126 homes, potentially. However, now you need to take out for that area, which is going to be wetlands. You're going to have to deduct that area. You're going to have to deduct any area that's part of your site development, streets, other amenities, whatnot. And then that's what your net would be. So that's why we say it's 40,000 square feet minimum. Your net is going to be much less than one unit per acre. Probably give or take 40%, I'd say, close to 40% less. My concern, gentlemen, is all of those little squiggly green lines south of it and east of it, especially east of it. Every one of those subdivisions empty out onto Bethel, New Bethel Road, and they all have to go out to Cornwallis. It would have been nice if it could somehow coordinate with the joining property owners to go to different routes, different roads, but it all empties back out to New Bethel and Cornwallis, and that's a lot of, lot of folks. A lot of lots. Yes. So I, I may be oversimplifying this in this question, but the the major benefit for going from AR to the AR with the IHI overlay is sewer. Is that so? It would be well possibility for sewer and density. Okay. Yes. Okay. 
in order to develop with sewer for residential in a residential purpose in the and this is an outline resource outline re residential sewer service area as well it, according to policy uh, it not only has to be in that in, in that district it also has to be adjacent to a development that is served by sewer which it is the development south of the creek and uh, and it would have to be either a PUD or developed at one and a half units per acre with no minimum lot size. So there's where your your if it was developed in that manner, in IH, if it was in IHI and developed in that manner at one and a half units per acre, they could essentially cluster those lots on the more buildable and con, you know conducive acres. Even more. Even more that way. So again, another another. So if they leave it like it is because it's adjacent to a subdivision that's served by sewer, do they get sewer? If it stays as is, not under our current policy. Okay. Uh, at the 2020 hearing, I think I asked you the question: uh, the, the reasoning behind staff denial, and I think it was because of uh, all the planned density on New Bethel. About the road, is you still is you still hanging your hat on that? We we still have some concerns over. So when you go, when the property's in, if the property's included in the IHI, then the density, the possibility for a, a more dense development, especially residential, can go up. That's not to say you can't have the same issues with commercial or industrial development. You certainly can, depending on once again, depending on the intensity. Uh, one of our concerns is the uh, the ability for emergency service access uh, along New Bethel Road, its overall width uh, and condition, as well as it is an, it is a dead end road, um, and everything funnels back to Cornwallis Corn Road. Cornwallis Road is already already exceeds its capacity with regard to traffic congestion. Yes. Um, now TIA did there was TIA done, and there are improvements that are noted to be done uh, if developed in. The manner in which it was presented to uh, install that would warrant a live traffic signal at New Bethel and Cornwallis Road. However, the signal will control the access, but it will not, it, it really doesn't do anything for the congestion and, and the capacity along Cornwallis as well. And it's the only route in and out of the development. Any other questions? All right. Well, I will close the public hearing and turn it over uh, to the board for, I don't know if we have more discussion or a motion. Hey, Commissioner Smith, would you move your microphone to there? I think they're having trouble. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. I'm sorry. All right. What is the pleasure of the board? something here and I'll, I'll uh, probably make a motion Mr. Chairman. All right. We'll give you a minute to do that. While he's doing that, Mr. Chairman, when I look at the things we have to consider, should consider, the consistency with the comprehensive plan is in the public interest. I guess that's debatable, that's subjective. Mm -hmm. Reasonableness, size, physical conditions, and other attributes of the area that's proposed to be rezoned, the benefits and detriments um, to the existing landowners or to the to the landowners of the subject property. Um, there is a there is a remedy in that they can build in an AR district, but um, the less density would mitigate the problems it brings to the entire neighborhood. So, so what do you say? I don't think I could be in favor of changing the, the I, IHI overlay. Well, you stated a pretty good uh, statement of consistent re resolution in your remarks. Do you want to make that as a motion? Well, um, I, 
Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the statement of consistency resolution that the use is not in the public interest and further that the use is not consistent with the comprehensive land use plan uh, and that it's uh, not in the, the best interest of the local citizens. And I move it be denied. All right, we have a motion and a, do we have a second? I have a second. All right, we have, now we have a second, so uh, any other discussion? All right, all in favor of the motion, uh, would you raise your hand and indicate the affirmative? All right, looks like the, the case, uh, the application is denied. So. Next item on the agenda is case 22-02. Mr. Newton, would you come forward and give us some background on this case? Yes, sir. Case 22 2 is a petition to rezone 14.57 acres located in the 700 block of Pea Ridge Road, Pleasant Grove Township, from Mobile Home Park District to General Business Conditional Zoning. Uh, owner and applicant, JMS Investment Group, the LLC. The conditional zoning request involves uh, uh, land use. Um, potential land use as commercial building with offices and warehouse utilities and services provided by 5210 fire district and rescue uh, the existing zoning is mobile home park district and it is currently vacant uh, there is no uh, mobile home park was never developed uh, surrounding zoning and land uses are AR and use for residential and agriculture purposes and uh, mobile home park district and use for mobile home park uh, this property borders uh, Harnett County, or is kind of situation that border Harnett County and Wake County in the very tip, uh, western tip of the county. Um, traffic count on this portion of Pea Ridge Road uh, was not available and it does not appear on our comprehensive transportation plan as needing improvement. Uh, property is designated in a secondary growth area in accordance with the county's comprehensive land use plan. Uh, be glad to answer any questions you might have. Any questions for Mr. Newton at this point? <coughs> All right. If the applicant is here, uh, would they step forward and uh, state your name and address and uh, provide us with your information? Mr. Roberts, again. good to see you again. <laughs> uh, again, Keith Roberts, 202 Monica Creek Drive, Cindy Garner. Uh, appreciate you uh, consideration of this uh, property, brings only the general business. Uh, this is one where basically just trying to look at the best use for the property. Uh, Jared Shea is here. He's, he's the uh, applicant client of mine. Uh, the property doesn't perk well for single family. Uh, there's one, maybe I put one home on the property at best based on the usable soil conditions on the property. So therefore, in looking at, hey, you know, what's the best use here? I think the general business zoning would be the best for this property. Um, and under general business, you know, the purpose of that there is to provide the commercial service centers accessible to the public and surrounding neighborhoods in the area. And basically, the requested zoning is needed. I think we believe in areas like this that are uh, underserved. The, uh, this parcel is located on Pea Ridge Road and just up the street from Harnett County. And therefore, in looking at the surrounding areas that include Harnett County, we see mostly mobile home zoning and large scale farming operations with many large. Uh, warehouses and commercial type facilities. Therefore, this parcel with the GV zoning would be appropriate and in line with other commercial type operations within the general area. We feel like that this rezoning would be the best utilization for the property. Uh, the rezoning would not have a negative impact on the surrounding areas, on the neighbors or property values. The site is located in a secondary growth area um, with many planned residential type developments in the area that could use these additional type of services. Again, we appreciate uh, the support we have from the planning board and uh, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Roberts? Uh, Mr. Roberts, at the planning board meeting, um, was the intent to use the property as a landscaping business? Yes, sir. With a building and truck park? Yes, sir. Is 
to uh, let me clarify because I know in the conditions it says landscape business, light grading contractor, and equipment storage. So is, is all of that tied into the landscaping as the base <coughs> business and the other equipment and equipment storage are related to, yeah, landscaping? Yes, sir. Okay. It's this, this property is totally surrounded by agriculture. There are no houses as I can. Right, there's some mobile homes on, I think, either side of it. Going off memory, there's a, across the street, there's a ag, kind of commercial ag facility. I think they do sales. Um, I forget the name of the. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's a nursery. I mean, looking yeah. at the aerial photographs to the to the east on both sides of the road. Yeah. Commissioner Braswell, did you have a question? The the landscape business that I, that I, I think you might have asked a question. That I just want to get clarification in my mind. There will be. It's not going to be like he's going to let other people park equipment there. It will be just for his operation. Correct. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Roberts? All right, thank you. Anyone else uh, wishing to speak on this matter, please step to the podium. If you would give your name and address. Uh, name is Jared Shea. Address is 3229 Summer Oaks Drive in Apex, North Carolina. Um, basically would like to use the property for a landscape storage area. Uh, for my business directly. Um, all the trucks would be in-house. Um, that's not, nobody else's equipment would be subbed out there. Um, there is a large, um, I guess, distribution center, Dupree Farms, across the, uh, the street. Um, it does sell sweet potatoes, tobacco, that kind of thing. They also sell a lot of sod to us um, that is directly across the street, um, as well as a nursery right around the corner. So. Kind of picked it, um, you know, like the the land in Mount Park um, might be able to build one house, but we're shooting to use it as a, a shop and storage facility. Are, are you planning on putting an office there, an uh, office yeah. building? Yes, sir. Just Do you have plans in the future to build a house there? No, sir. Okay. So you said the land would not park? It would park for like one house. Um, Mr. Roberts would have better yeah. information on the soil maps for that, but um, it originally was not developed as a mobile home park because there's only one small portion in the um, upper corner that will park for a septic. Well, we got about 220 feet of road furniture. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Will this be your primary business, or do you have a primary business somewhere else? This will be my primary. Or are you located somewhere else? We yeah. are. We're located in Fuquay now. Fuquay. Yes, sir. So you want to move your operation? Yes, sir. Wouldn't have to travel out of the county every day. <laughs> do you have plans to fence it? Yes, sir. We'll do um, fencing around it um, as well. Of course, we're a landscape company, so we'll do type B buffer as required and then of course, enhance that along the front um, just for privacy and screening. I agree with all this. Yeah. So it's most of your work residential? Sir. Landscaping? Yes, residential. Sir. Um, most of it is, is new home landscaping. So, and I did want to make sure you were, there's 14 conditions listed and you're agreeable to each one of those? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And I did want to ask, and this may be a staff question too, but you can answer this since it's your business. Well, it says generally operate during standard business hours. What, what, does, that, what does that mean to you? Um, our guys start at 6.30 and get off at 4.30. And Mr. Newton, is that consistent with what you consider general business hours? It would be. I would feel better if we put a stop and start on it if that's if that's where we're going, um, we're comfortable with 6.30, 6 a.m. to 5, 5.30, just to give them, because you, you will have those days where they may roll in late and 
one thing we don't want is someone to call to complain on a on a thirty minute you know or thirty minute late arrival or something of that nature. Six to eight things happen. Some still. I was going to say I was going to refer to ask council is I mean I'm okay with general but. I, does pinning it down help both of us out? In the I, I think it does. If you had some specificity, I think that would be helpful. And and certainly we would need the applicant to agree to those hours. I think Commissioner Godwin had suggested six to eight. Six to eight. Yes, sir. I agree. Well, that, yeah, that's more than he's. Yeah, sometimes he just mentioned. Little. Okay. So if we'd make that note on where'd it go? Item number four. Generally operate. 6 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, would that be uh, seven days a week or Monday through Saturday? We just kind of like uh, clarify that. I'm having Monday through Saturday in my head, but again, we'll, that's yeah. what I have. Cause Monday through Saturday. Okay, my there guys rarely work Saturdays, but they definitely do not work Sunday. So. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? Thank you. And if there's not anyone else uh, to speak, I will close the public discussion of the hearing and I will call for Brasson to uh, summarize and present the planning board uh, recommendation. Yes, sir. With regard to case 22-02, the planning board does recommend approval uh, with the stated conditions uh, and of course with any amendments uh, here to agreed upon this evening. Uh, and offers for your consideration also a statement of consistency. All right. Any last questions for Mr. Newton? All right. And I've already asked the applicant if he agreed with the, the final conditions that we proposed. So I will close the hearing and turn it over to the board for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the statement of consistency resolution as presented in the agenda package and approve the rezoning request with the condition as discussed, including the t new time. Uh, I think it was six to eight Monday through uh, Saturday. Saturday. Uh, second. Second. All right, we have a motion in several seconds. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Rezoning, uh, conditional rezoning is approved. Thank you. Next up is case 2203, also a conditional zoning uh, hearing. And Mr. Newton, if you would uh, start on that one as well. Yes, sir. Case 22-03 involves petition to rezone 13.69 acres located at 2752 Plainview Church Road in Pleasant Grove Township from agriculture residential to general business. Uh, conditional zoning uh, owner applicant once again JMS investment group LLC and the uh, conditional zoning request is to allow the use of uh, property for outdoor storage uh, to include but I'm sure not limited to boats RVs travel trailers and the like uh, utilities and services in the area provided by West Johnson Fire District and 5210 rescue the property is currently zoned agricultural residential and used for such purposes and uh, surrounding land zoning and land uses are AR and used for residential agriculture purposes. Uh, AR special use district and this is an outdoor paintball course um, and general business special use district and it's an ornamental ironwork shop and automotive repair and clothing service. Uh, traffic along, uh, that's actually wrong there, we'll forget traffic. It's not not playing you church road sorry for that error uh, the land use plan does have this property designated as secondary growth area in, in the um, and we should expect moderate levels of growth pressures uh, over the next 20 years uh, be glad to answer you any questions you may have and you will see the conditions there and there are, there is one change that's proposed by uh, or that came out of the planning board to those conditions and that would be um, item number four All right, any questions of Mr. Newton? And it, it right, right I, I did have one, so the, right now the businesses in the area are, it looks like, how far, I'll say how far away, I see residential 
uses. Yes, it's immediately there. Well, there's residential uses and agricultural uses. It's right. immediately adjacent to, <coughs> excuse me, adjacent to um, a voluntary ag district, as you can see there um, on your map. Uh, and there's the agricultural residential special use district um, just to the north of the property and then off to the, uh, just to the south and east uh, of the property along Massengill Pond Road, you'll see uh, the general business special use district. And uh, forgive me, my hearing is sometimes spotty, as my wife will attest, but did you say paintball? Were you talking about what's on there now? Or did I hear you say paintball? It's not, it's not on there now. There's property in the area that does it. Okay, involve, okay. It is paintball. Right. It is paintball. I just want to make sure that was kind of, yeah. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Newton? I'm glad you clarified that. I have okay. some okay. confusions. All right, uh, if there's anyone else uh, that wish to comment on this uh, case, please step forward. Mr. Roberts, uh, it's the last time of the evening here. So, yeah. State your name and address one more time, please. Keith Roberts, 202 Monica Creek Drive in Garner. Uh, appreciate your time. And uh, I wanted to just to uh, Mr. Shea here. He, he's definitely very getting more and more invested in the Johnson County area. He loves it out there. I think his business address is still in Apex. I know he's renting a house up on State Road in Johnson County, and he just bought a house in Johnson County. And so he, he loves the area, a lot of friends out that way. So um, looking to, to be rooted in that community for some time. So I think that's a, that's a good thing. With this here, too, I, as I mentioned before, I believe in looking at the use of the property, the general business zoning is, is probably the best use for this type of property based on the location and where it is. Um, in looking at it, you know, it's bordered by what appears to be large chicken houses on the back, and uh, and like the previous parcel, it's also near Hardin County. So again, in looking at in that area, there are large large scale mobile home parks, rental parks, and other commercial type operations. For all these reasons mentioned, that it shouldn't this parcel works well, does not work well for residential development. I, I don't know a lot of people who want to live there back enough to. What, what appears to be the, the chicken houses. Therefore, that's why we're requesting the GP, uh, GP zoning. We feel this zoning would be the best utilization for the property. We feel that this zoning would not have a negative impact on the surrounding property or property values. The site is located in a secondary growth area and would help serve many of the residential projects that are existing and proposed in the area, where a lot of the HOAs do not allow the use for uh, outdoor storage. Yeah, appreciate your time. Hear any questions? And uh, Mr. Shea, as you just heard from, is also available. Okay. Any questions for uh, Mr. Roberts? Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Roberts, there was uh, discussion about in the planning board uh, the left turn lane and it changes to the existing driveway. Is that part of the permitting? Well, we, we would submit a site plan. That we, we haven't looked at the traffic out there, to be honest with you. I don't think any can. I think that it would be a low enough traffic generator where a left turn lane would not be required. Just a right in, right out from where you're coming. I would I would think it'd be a full Fully service right access yeah. in, in this situation just because it's be such a low, low traffic generator. Oh, so that's what you're showing on the maps. Now it's just the you know, full service. service with the septic up in, in the front. Yeah. This one, just like the other one, too, that little septic area up in the front, that's all that first one the entire property. So, Mr. Shea has a nose for finding those, huh? Hey, he does. <laughs> hey, I, I, I said that to him. Yeah. <laughs> so, condition number six, it talked about right in, right out of the island. They want to condition. Or I'm on the wrong one. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah, think you're. Yeah, you're, you're, you're. I think you're on the next. You're on the next case because six here is uh, shall conform to the requirements of the Johnson County Land Development Code. Okay, yeah. I was looking at the wrong one. I, yeah, I apologize. No problem. Sorry. I was thinking I didn't remember anything about a left turn lane at the planning board. I was 
for my mind is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you like, you have most engineers, you probably have one or two, one or two, one or two <laughs> cases uh, off, that you're about. looking at. Okay. I, I did have one question, and and maybe Mr. Shea may be the more appropriate, but in this one, and maybe it's Braston, but it says lighting will be engineered at, to not cause any adverse effects to adjacent properties. Uh, but on the previous case, it was a little more, really what I would say, a little more specific. Lighting should be dark sky or down lighting so as not to shine on adjacent property. So is there, was there a different reason for that difference? I'm sorry, I'm getting out of order, but. I'm no, I mean, you know, we have to meet the lighting ordinance, and typically Duke Energy does our lighting plans for us and draws them up to meet whatever the ordinance of the, uh, of the county is. Okay. I have yeah. a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, man, what kind of improvements will be on this property? Other than fencing, basically it would all be gravel okay. and then fencing, and then heavy landscaping. Uh, and being a landscaping company, as you're, you're aware, he will go above and beyond what the county requires. Right. But uh, no, no structures. No, sir, not okay. this time. All right. The impervious surfaces mentioned here could be paving, I guess. Paving, or yeah, the county considers gravel uh, impervious. Right. All right. All right. Uh, I'm good, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Mr. Roberts. Uh, anyone else? Mr. Shea, if you would state your, your name and address one more time. That's Jared Shea, address is 3229 Summer Oaks Drive, um, Apex, North Carolina. Um, I guess the second, um, what Mr. Keith was saying, the uh, the property did park a little bit up there on the front. Um, and would like to use the property as outdoor storage for both trailers and RVs. Um, there are a handful of new developments going in in the area by having a big developers as you guys just know, Dan Ryan, P.R. Horton, those kind of neighborhoods where they, HOAs will not allow them to put boats and RVs in their driveways. Um, so providing a space for um, these neighborhoods that are going in for people to park recreational vehicles would I believe would suit this this area well. And, and there was a change on condition number four. The planning board we propose hours would be seven a.m. to nine p.m. Yes, sir. Seven days a week. That's correct. That was proposed by you, right? Yes, sir. Okay. It was done just to reduce traffic or anybody going in there. There'd be uh, you know an access keypad that of course will only work between seven and nine, um, but to eliminate anybody going in there late at night, um, shining headlights or anything, that's why the, the times were set. All right, and there we have 17 um, conditions listed in your agreeable, but those others stand uh, yes, currently, okay. with, with the noted change from the planning board of the hours of operation. And I would, so Mr. Newton, I just want to make sure uh, the staff is okay without these, what's the right term, the dark sky or downlining on this on this project? Yes, sir. Our ordinance actually addresses that. So when they go okay. through a commercial site plan review, your ordinance actually states that it must be dark sky or downlining, okay. and, and they'll have to provide a lighting plan. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. I take it the, uh, the entry gate must be at least 100 feet from the right away of the road so they won't stack back in the road. Yes, sir, it'll need to be offset um, so that there's no RVs or boats that right. are in the, in the main road. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Commissioner. The, the operator, there wouldn't be a people on, on site continuous during the seven and nine, it's gonna be key ice operated. That's correct, yes, sir. Oh, okay. All right, any other questions for Mr. Shea? Thank you. All right, this time I'm going to close the public discussion portion of the hearing and ask for Braxton to come up, summarize, and present the planning board's uh, recommendation. Yes, sir. As it relates to 22 uh, or rezoning case 22 03, uh, planning board does recommend approval with the uh, noted conditions uh, and the modification of condition number four to read hours will be 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., seven days a week. Uh, they also offer a resolution statement of consistency for your consideration. All right. Any other questions <laughs> to Mr. Newton? 
Right, again, the applicant has agreed with the uh, 17 conditions, including the one modified at the planning board level. Uh, with that, I will close uh, the public hearing and turn it over to the board for this. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the statement of consistency resolution as presented in the agenda packet and approve the rezoning request with the conditions as, as discussed. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any well, other? One, one point. Uh, discussion. <laughs> yeah, I, I was wondering if we had to include it in the motion, Councilor, the hours 7 to I think that's an uh, that was in the revised yeah, um, conditions. Okay. Yes, sir. So that's already included. Okay. Yep. I'm sorry. Yeah, we didn't change that. Yep. Okay. Sorry. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Next up is case 2204, also a conditional zoning uh, district hearing. Brass, if you would. Yes, sir. Start off for us. Uh, Case 2204 uh, involves a petition to rezone 6.8 acres located at 9180 Cleveland Road in the Cleveland Township from Agriculture, Residential, and General Business Special Use District to General Business Conditional Zoning. Uh, owners double uh, DJ properties and Denton F. Lee and Jane A. Lee. The applicant is Adams and Hodge Engineering on behalf of the owners. Uh, the request, conditional zoning request, is for an assorted uh, businesses as listed in the conditions you, as you'll see those and all of these are currently permitted within a general business district uh, utility services in this area provided by McLemore fire district and uh, cns rescue and the of course land uses agriculture residential and general business special use district that special use does allow for uh, a church and an ice cream shop which is pelicans uh, as you may know uh, the surrounding zoning and land uses are AR and use for agriculture residential purposes, general business, uh, and a myriad of retail and service oriented businesses and general business special use district for a pharmacy and food line uh, shopping center. And this is located directly across the road. Uh, traffic concerns for Cleveland Road, uh, the counts there are 17,000 vehicles per day, that's 20, uh, 2016 count, and Cleveland Road does appear on the Comprehensive Transportation Plan as Boulevard Needing Improvement. Cleveland Road is actually listed on the state's uh, traffic improvement program as an unfunded project to go from a two-lane to a three-lane uh, three lane widened road from Barber Mill to NC42. Be glad to answer any questions you may have. Any questions, Mr. Newton? So, I did have one. So, the <coughs> in the packet, there's a list of allowable business uses. Is that the the list from the applicant? That is, yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? If not, uh, we have the applicant come forward. State their name and address and present your case. Good evening, I'm Donnie Adams with Adams and Hodge Engineering, 314 East Main Street in Clayton. And uh, my firm is the uh, planner and engineer on this project. And I know as part of your packet, um, you have our conceptual site plan, but also um, the, the owner and developer has had someone put together a colored rendering of that and we have it digitally but also have a printout copy and included those um, conditions that you mentioned. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And we're done. Paul and Adam. I'll need one if you don't mind. So, a few statements that um, I'll, I'll keep it brief tonight, but I have a few statements about our um, conditional zoning. Uh, number one, the purpose of the proposed district is to develop 
a neighborhood commercial node that's in compliance with the Johnson County 2030 comp plan. <clears throat> um, the proposed development will promote public health and safety and general welfare by creating a walkable development, repurposing existing structures on site, and providing um, the site with public water and public sewer. The proposed uses for the development are appropriate for the area, and you guys have a copy of that. We've kind of broken it down to a smaller subset. This part view development will maintain or enhance the character of the neighborhood by providing spaces for the businesses, utilizing an architectural style in building construction that blends in um, and enhances the existing and nearby architectural styles. Um, and furthermore, again, state, I'd like to state that um, this proposed use is consistent with the Johnson County 2030 comp plan. We have had the opportunity to read and are in agreement with the conditions of approval set on this site. Um, I'm, I'll be able to answer any questions that you might have in regards to the site plan. Also, uh, the owner and developer, Mr. Denton Lee, is here, and I think he has a few words he might like to say. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Mr. Lee, if you would state your name and address for the record. Yes, sir. Denton Lee. To Annandale Drive, Clayton, North Carolina. Appreciate your time tonight. Thank you for considering this. Um, we um, we believe that there are limited properties within the old part of the Cleveland uh, Township or Cleveland community, and those properties we have to be very conscious and deliberate about how we zone those properties. This particular property that we own. Uh, is right across the street from a very successful food line. I would gather to say it's one of their top producers. Uh, we also have a, a nice health smart pharmacy that we uh, provided property for across the street. We believe now that it is the time for us to provide some class A type of uh, lease space for professional services. We particularly need in this area some type of uh, uh, health care, some type of uh, uh, urgent care, or, or if, as you know, we're in the middle of three elementary schools. I, I would think a, a, uh, uh, a physician of, uh, would be very successful in this location. Uh, we need professional services that can be provided. If you look at the map if you, on, the, on this property and you look around, of the amount of rooftops that surround uh, this part of Cleveland, it is staggering, to be honest with you. And all of these folks have got to travel somewhere to get the services uh, that they need. Could be banking services, health care services. Um, and our goal is to provide services in these properties uh, that would be uh, beneficial to the community itself. Um, uh, the, the building that you see in the middle is the only one that is on the property right now, other than uh, we have moved a Pelican Snowball building that was on that property. We've moved it to the side of the build, of the property uh, and the, in preparation for building the streets internally. We do not wish to create another Highway 42 uh, uh, area. We want to take traffic off of Cleveland Road get it into our site, provide adequate parking, sidewalks for uh, walking. We're, we can announce tonight that the central building has been, uh, is being remodeled today, or uh, will be as soon if this is approved. We will begin remodeling of that building, and it will become a full service restaurant uh, that will be uh, leased by uh, Nathan and Colleen Roby, and you may know them as owners of the Simple Twist franchise. Um, they will start a different franchise here uh, in this building. It will not be a Simple Twist, but it will be something else, and they're very experienced restaurateurs. So we're very excited to have them as the anchor building in the middle of this development with other professional services around. And we are talking to banks and health care and others and we'll be very selective in who goes into this area. It's a critical part of the Cleveland community, and uh, we're going to be very deliberate about how, how we would like to develop it. So we appreciate your support. 
uh, because rezoning is the first step, and then we'll begin to move forward on that. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes, sir. Then this, this drawing here, is that just on this partial rezoning, or does that include the trapezoid beside it? Let me show you my picture here. Is all of this going to fit on this, just this lot? It, it, it has two properties. Okay, it includes There are two good. properties. I thought uh, perhaps it did. included in the request right. uh, to, to rezone both properties. Okay. Uh, one is simply a field today, and it will be incorporated in the left side of what you see here. And we need to incorporate that because in our conversations with DOT, we'd like to create a, uh, a drive directly across from the main food line drive so that it becomes, uh, that's where the in and out will go. The other drive will become a right only in our conversations with uh, DOT. So uh, we're being very conscious. We're gonna put breakdown lanes on both drives so that uh, everything will be as friendly as possible, as I said, to get traffic off Cleveland Road and into the development for the services provided. In 1965, Mr. Chairman, when I played baseball on the field, all of that was a field then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly correct. And uh, Ted, we are, uh, we named this place uh, uh, Park View Center. Uh, because we are in direct view of parks. So right. When we talk about dark lighting, it won't really be necessary. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, the ball, lights, the yeah. ball <laughs> lights may provide the lighting for us, yeah. but uh, we, are, we have, we have put to the rear of this property to the right. GCAA property, county property, actually, yep. this leased to GCAA uh, at the very rear of this property for ball fields. So, it is surrounded by ball fields. Yeah, I see field six where my grandson plays t ball right back there, oh. practices t ball back there. So, yes, I don't want to belabor anything. Uh, else. Any other questions any for questions Mr. Lee? Mr. Chairman, the, the, the existing building you said is going to become a restaurant. Is what was that the daycare? Was that previously a daycare? What was that before? It was the main building for the batting cage business yeah, that, that used to be on that, Dickie, that used to be on that uh, property that my my son ran many years ago. Uh, that became not a viable business many years uh, in the past. There's been a, a church in that building for for a while. Uh, the, they are they've now been uh, out, and we are we're stripping the building, getting ready to uh, to remodel that. The little Pelican building, you plan on leaving it as The Pelican's the... building was a, a simple frame building that was built uh, about 2009, and it was built right beside that building, which would have been right in the driveway of where we want to, we want to put a drive-in window around that building. So we had to move uh, the, the Pelican's building. He's in the process of, of that now. But that will still be a viable business? Yes. Okay. Well, we think it provides a service for the community as well. It's a place where teenagers and, and young people hang out and like to come after a ball game to get a snow cone, a snowball. Uh, so we think it's, it's, a, it, it's a business that ought to stay. It's a, it's a nice young man that runs it, and we're tickled to death to keep him on the property. In, in your conversations with DOT, about straight across from the food line, with, did you all discuss the traffic light there? <laughs> It did not come up. I just say I can see a lot of accidents happening. People. It's so close Especially to the other traffic, traffic light. I won't call when when DOT says it meets warrant, it'll get us traffic light, but not yeah. until. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's a very valid uh, question, Dickie. But it is uh, it is so close to the traffic light at uh, Michael Moore Road. Yeah, uh, it comes out there. Uh, so. That traffic light stops traffic enough to where turning is not a real problem. The problem would be that if we tried to turn left into our existing drive, because we're fighting, we'd be fighting the traffic, the turn lane for the food line. So by putting it straight in front, our traffic, turn, our left turn traffic, their left turn traffic, will be facing each other at that intersection. So we have discussed that in detail with the OT uh, about that possibility. Getting part of the uh, permitted uses as a governmental facility. Sounds like that'd be a good place for a town hall 
you know. <laughs> now, now you were describing a town when you were up here giving us a um, comment. I, yeah. I would uh, certainly be uh, thrilled to lease one of those buildings or provide a ground space for a town hall. If Will it, you make that a condition? If you can make it happen, <laughs> happen time, I'll be glad to provide a place for it. <laughs> Any any other questions of Mr. Lee? I, I did have one, and this may be Mr. Adams or Mr. Newton. So, um, condition six says right in, right out island should be larger and include stems similar to the one across Cleveland Road. But what exactly? What does that mean? I mean, to me, that seems to be tightened up a little bit. What is similar to? Yeah, yeah. That's something that um, uh, that DOT provided that comment, and we know as we move, should we get the rezoning approved tonight, we know that we're going to have to re move forward with a commercial site plan for this, and at that time we'll be applying for a driveway permit, and then that will be addressed in it. But basically, we've shown a right in, right okay. out already, and he's just saying he wants us to expand the size of that okay. that item. So I, I guess my question for staff and council would be: Does that not go roll up under number five since it's Basically, it's going to require a driveway permit. Is there something special that needs to be called out? No, it essentially could. It was just a note we included it because it was a note or it was a note from or a comment from TRC review from directly from NCDOT, as they're kind of aware of since it's site plan specific pro, uh, project, and they were aware of the conditions that exist in the area and with the driveway of uh, food line, they just added that into their comments, okay. got included. It really doesn't matter from us because they still have to go through that driveway permit process. So either, either way is fine with us. We can, it can be in, totally encompassed into uh, item, item five as well. Okay, well I was gonna say since Strike we've already heard that the applicant accepts all eight of them, I think we'll leave it the, as it is rather than change it so uh, any other uh, questions or comments I'm trying to think where I am now I need to close the public the, the public discussion and perhaps if you come forward and summarize and present the planning board's recommendation yes, sir as it relates to case 22 that shows for planning board does recommend approval with the uh, with the stated conditions and those are eight in total and does all for your consideration of resolution statement of consistency. Uh, and I do did want to make sure we did get the applicant's uh, concurrence on the conditions. Correct. We'll make sure we got that. I think we did. So, all right. Uh, any final questions for Mr. Newton? All right. If not, uh, uh, as I think we've always heard, the applicant has agreed to the mm -hmm. conditions. And uh, I will now close the public hearing and turn it over to the board. Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the statement of consistency resolution as presented in the agenda packet and approve the rezoning request at, with the conditions as discussed for case 22-04. I second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? We have a nice looking addition out there. Yeah. yeah. Town Hall would be a good place. It was. Yeah. Uh, if uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, Mr. Newton, I think you can give us the planning activity report and uh, update on our comp use, comprehensive land use plan. Yes, sir. So, um, as stated previously, we we were planning to conduct two uh, public forums of with, with the same material, and we did so, uh, holding these on. March 20, or February 23rd and February 24th at JC at Johnson Community College in the Great Hall and at the uh, Clayton Center, respectively. Uh, we had uh, we had north of 100 uh, total participants in those two meetings um, combined. Um, Clayton obviously was the larger attended of the two, um, being as that is the poor population for the county, uh, largest populated area in the county. Um, we got a tremendous amount of feedback from those in attendance and that is being compiled and we are, uh, once that is all compiled and we're ready to present that, we will be coming back to uh, this body and we may actually try to arrange a joint session with Planning Board and Board of County Commissioners trying to encapsulate everything at one time if we can uh, to this phase. 
Um, they are also taking and moving into some preliminary uh, preliminary work in the in, in the next phase, which is some suggested uh, suggested issues or plan moving forward with implementation. Um, and so the consultant and staff are working on those now. Um, but we will be getting back to this body as well as the planning board about hopefully a joint session in the very near future um, to give you something a little more solidified as far as the in input we got from the public, uh, from those two public forums. Uh, we feel really good about it. Um, and there are many, many changes to come in the future after the plan is, uh, is finally completely drafted and hopefully adopted. Um, just want to remind everyone our next phase would be to move into a uh, review of our development ordinances and see where we stand there with regard to consistency with plan the adopted plan and we are looking to if needed uh, to move forward in the next budget cycle with uh, with addressing that uh, if you want to call it redevelopment of our development ordinances uh, but that's where we stand today. Um, with regard to other activity in the planning department, and I'll, I'll go ahead and speak for the entire land use uh, land use facility, things are extremely busy. Um, we have not seen uh, any any slow in, in growth or development here in the county. Um, our, the numbers we're seeing in our office with regard to new submittals, um, plant recordations, uh, commercial uh, commercial site development submittals. Uh, inspections with a number of permits, uh, utilities, water meters, and, and those infrastructure projects, as well as environmental health and their, uh, their numbers as far as permits uh, submitted. Uh, we're not seeing a down, downward trend at all. Uh, so uh, that is good, both good and bad. It's, it's good we have the growth and, and we're, we're seeing that we're a, a desirable community. However, we, we want to be able to, to kind of manage that in a, uh, in, in a better manner. So that's what we're working toward, but it is, a, it is extremely busy. Mr. Chairman, uh, it was my understanding that we were going to have a discussion about this topic at the, our planning retreat. So I was wondering if Braston's going to be there, where we can do that. So uh, I think for the planning retreat, we will probably not have a specific discussion. It will be part of our prioritization but I don't know that we will have a, we're going to have other opportunities to have uh, some at length discussions uh, at other meetings, in, including probably the middle, the middle meeting of the month uh, here. But uh, the, my intention was that we're not going to get into specific lengthy discussions on land use plan. It will be a priority. We'll figure out what priority is and I'm sure with that will come discussions, uh, but it will, it will not be a, what we've typically had where it's been, uh, you know, two, three, four hours on discussing one item and then moving it forward, so. If that clarifies, I don't know which one to hear, but I think that's the purpose is not to have any one topic dominate uh, our meeting, meetings, so. Any other questions? I'll make a comment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at one of the sessions that I was at uh, with the annual conference with the uh, Commissioner Association, a uh, gentleman holding it, I may have mentioned this before, from the School of Government talked about it was important when you had your land use plan to follow that plan and not make exceptions. And once we get this in place, that's going to be the challenge for us. You know, create the plan but then work the plan and not be making constant exceptions. If we do, we don't really need a plan. Agree. That, that and Consistency with the plan and, and updating the plan on a regular basis. Right. Yeah. I mean, on a consistent cycle of, of five years, three to five years would be five years would be the most. Ted, I just comment on that that uh, <clears throat> if you're just going to follow the plan, that's what the rule was before the legislation. We got out of the legislature, and what that that was a judicial function, and the new law that we now have gives us legislative functions to where we can use our judgment to do what's in the best interest of the county. And we have that flexibility. I'd hate to give that flexibility away. And we've used it in the past 
a month or two, we've used that flexibility, I believe, to make some good decisions. I understand, but it gets to be very subjective, and in hindsight, those good decisions may turn out to be not that good of decisions, but it is subjective. Yeah. Well, I've seen us tonight approve three zoning requests with all kinds of stipulations, conditions, and I don't know that we have a a operation in place or a policy in place that we'd ever check to see if anybody's following those conditions without a complaint from the public. Am I wrong? No, that's correct. We are complaint driven with regard to enforcement. Yeah, Absolutely. So, I mean, unless we get, we're making these stipulations, but if someone that don't know these stipulations and just drive by and say, well, why did they approve that? And not go check, but I'm just saying, I'll t I take it very seriously when we're talking about regulate what somebody can do with their property and yeah. uh, so. Fred makes a good point uh, when when uh, when you're you, you can't overlay everything and, and constantly adhere to it because not everything's the same not everything's black and white yep. yeah. so conditions change and when you in essence when when this body or sees the, the decision making body sees rezoning and you make a change in your zoning map that is may not be just because you, you don't find it to be <coughs> consistent with your plan doesn't necessarily mean you can't approve that rezoning or that development plan. You can do so, but what it in, in effect when you change that zoning, you amend your plan yeah. as well. So that, the, I, that if your reasoning is <coughs> consistent, absolutely. I, th I think we by. will get many many concessions out of developers on plans that will make our county a better county having this flexibility. Yeah, Mr. Newton, I believe you touched on it at the start of the discussion. <coughs> uh, the other piece of the puzzle with the land, the land use plan itself provides that kind of quilt to, to look at, but we also have the ordinances to, to put in to, to get into the specifics of what that, what that means. So it's another, another piece to the, the puzzle, but I agree with uh, Commissioner Smith that uh, with these conditional uses, I think there's opportunities to, to get better developments than, than we've probably, I'll say, ever have, but to get more consistently to developments that are, are better than what we've seen. It is a much that. better situation than what we previously had. Right. With only special use, uh, it, I, uh, this is so much simpler. I, I, I'm, I'm okay with what Bud said. A little disappointed because I, I <clears throat> my memory, uh, I still have hair, but my memory still. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> I'll take offense yeah. to that, sir. And, uh, <laughs> but I just, I think what Ted said a couple of meetings ago is really important about taking people's property. Yeah. And I just, I just hope that we don't get into an inverse condemnation through regulations because there are a lot of. Farmers who can't farm anymore. There are a lot of people who that's their life savings, and I just hope we uh, we remember that when we when we do this. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Newton? All right. Thank you, Bryson. Uh, Mr. Hatcher, you. you have do you have any comments? Thank you. All right. Any uh, board reports or comments? I do, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I, I've got a question. When is the deadline for the applicants? So uh, I had that on one of my items. So we have uh, obviously an opening in, uh, for a commissioner from District Six, uh, 7. How about I get this right in a minute? Well, District 4. four. Yeah. Oh, let's try. We go with four. I only had three more left. So I was eventually going to get on it. I was eventually going to get the right one. So District <laughs> 4. And application deadline is 5 o'clock this Friday, uh, which is the 11th. And after the applications are submitted, we will have a committee of, of three of us to interview the candidates and applicants, rather. And uh, my hope is that we would have a recommendation for this board at our first April meeting. And I think if we follow last protocol, that person would probably be sworn in before before that meeting. If we can squeeze in the middle of the month, making the deadline for getting the applicants interviewed. So it's my understanding that. Well, we have that power that after that, the person that will be the Republican nominee 
in the next election. We do not have anything to do with that, but that's 100% the party's decision. That is my understanding, and that is a complicated. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, that, Council. I want that you is explain correct. That, better than me. that is correct, and um, Leanne Price notified uh, both executive committee um, chairs to let them know of the process, and we have requested that each party provide the or certify the name of their nominee uh, by August the 1st. So we have plenty of time, st time to get the ballots printed and all of those sorts of things. And so that, that is the way the process will work. It will be up to the executive committee of each party uh, to give us the names of the, the individuals that will be going on the ballot. And I, I would say our, so with the two, with the two, it could be two different people, it could be the same people but our appointment will be from April through that first meeting in December is the, is the term of our appointment. And then the Republican Party's nominee in the Democratic Party, they would nominate people for the November election and the winner would assume in a normal uh, course. So do, do we have, if the Democrats and the Republicans pick one, would there be, uh, they pick only one, so that Eliminate, that eliminates the need for a primary. There's, yeah, there is no primary yeah, That's correct. for that. There will, it will be in the general election where that the ultimate the two-year term is, is determined. So, for whatever it's worth, the Supreme Court today mm -hmm. denied both North Carolina and Pennsylvania's appeal on the congressional districts. Okay. Um, and then uh, the other, the only other thing I had again is a reminder of our strategic uh, planning session, uh, March the 17th and 18th at Campbell, in the Marsh Banks Hall. Uh, and I will remind these sessions will be uh, live streamed on our YouTube channel, so the public will be able to either attend in person or uh, tune in on the YouTube. So, with that, that's all I have. Uh, if there's no other comments, we will adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Um.